What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to complete the square step by step when we have a coefficient for x squared is not equal to one. So in this case, you can see we have y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 32. Now, the first thing that I always mention to students, or at least try to remind them time and time and time again, is whenever you're trying to complete the square, you have to make sure that your coefficient of x squared is does not have a coefficient. So, or at least the coefficient always going to be a positive one. Otherwise, then you have to go ahead and factor it out. Or you could divide it on both sides, but I'll get to that in a later video. What I wanna focus on here is actually using the factoring technique. I don't want that two there. So I have to get rid of it, all right? So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna work through things step by step. And again, this is going to be step by step when we're gonna be dealing with having a coefficient of a, a not equal to one. So the first thing we always wanna do though is also going to be grouping. Okay, so it's very important that you kind of recognize why I grouped the first two terms, all right? And the reason why I grouped those first two terms is one, that's gonna help me with the factoring, which is gonna be the next step, so just hold on. And the other thing is like, this tells me like, this is where I wanna create that perfect square trinomial. Remember, when we are completing the square, we're trying to create a perfect square trinomial that we can then factor down. So we have to kind of like group our terms um, in looking for how we're going to, or where we're going to create that perfect square trinomial. But before we do that, we gotta get rid of that two, okay? So to get rid of the two, and again, I'm gonna focus on the factoring technique. You could divide it on both sides, but let's just focus on the factoring. All right, so we're going to factor out the a. In this case, the a is going to be two. So again, basically what you're doing is you're going to be dividing out the coefficient, the a, from both of these terms, okay? So when I do that, it's just gonna look like this. So it's really, it's really important that I, that I want you guys to recognize what I did here, is by only focusing or only grouping these first two terms, I didn't have to touch the 32, all right? So I just was able to factor the two out of these two terms, and this 32 is just kind of still preserved in this case. So we're still looking good in that regard. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to complete the square here, right? We need to find the value C that completes the square. All right, so remember C is going to be the value that is going to um, complete the square. So when we're talking about our B divided by two squared, we're talking about the middle term of our quadratic. Now, a big mistake that students will make, and again, this might be a, like, I don't know, an alarm or something you might wanna do like as a sound, sound effect. Like a big mistake that students will make here is that they'll go back to the B that's from the original equation. No, 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 don't do that. Take the B here that you've already factored out the two. This is the equation that we're gonna wanna complete the square with. So when I'm going ahead and finding my value C, I'm gonna take my six, which is this B, divided by two and square it. Now six divided by two is three. Three squared is going to equal a nine. Okay, so now that we figured out our value C, right? Now what we need to do is add the C inside of our parentheses, which is going to create the perfect square trinomial, as well as subtract it outside the parentheses, right? Because we have to produce what we call equivalent equations. You just can't add a number to an equation and be like, oh, I'm done, like I just add it to an equation, no. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, right? Or you could just add and subtract it, right? Because adding and subtracting are inverse operations. It's like the same thing if I had five. If I multiply by two and divide by two, like I, I still, that's still equal to five. If I have a five plus one, right? And then subtract one, that's still equal to five. So if I'm gonna add a nine, even though it's inside the parentheses, I just have to make sure I subtract the nine outside the parentheses. And then there's a really big important tip that's gonna come up here in just a second. So I still have my two, right? It's been factored out. Now I'm left with an x squared plus a six x. Now remember we have this nine here, right? That was the one that I got here. So that nine comes right there. Then we gotta remember, like, uh oh, remember you gotta subtract the nine. Now here is where the mistake happens, okay? Here's a really, really big mistake. Technically, mathematically, you did not add a nine here. You added a nine that via distributive property, because if I was to multiply this two, right? This two is not multiplied by the x squared, the two is multiplied by the x squared, the six x, the nine, right? distributed property. Technically, you added a nine that's being multiplied by two. So when you subtract a nine, it also has to be multiplied by two. So now you multiply it by two, and then don't forget, like we still have this 32, right? Don't forget about the good old 32. 32 is still, still, still just like chilling out there. Now we have the x squared plus six x plus nine. Remember, that's our perfect square trinomial, right? What two numbers that are exactly the same are gonna multiply to give you nine, add to give you six. And hopefully, you know, you get practice with these perfect square trinomials, and this becomes easier and easier and you recognize, oh, that's just gonna be a three. So now I have a y is equal to a two times an x plus three, quantity squared. Now here I have a nine times two, which is going to be a negative 18. So 32 plus a negative 18 is going to be what? A 14, a positive 14. So plus 
a positive 14. And now you can see that we have this um, in our vertex form, which I forgot to add in. The last step is you know, probably, rather pretty simple, which is you know, step number four, which is just to simplify. Now, the problem with this one is there's no fractions. It was, rather, it, was, it was a little difficult with the coefficient of two, but if you wanna see me do an example when I have fractions of completing the square, well, that's gonna be in the next video.